Hello, I'm Gabe Ortiz, and this is WEDU Arts Plus. Artist Noah Deletta spends his days pushing dense and geometric shapes into aluminum cans. And the result is something unlike you've ever seen before. The Irony and Aluminum Project is about how something ordinary can transform into something astonishing. It's the art of possibility. It's I mean, the idea that something we're all familiar with can be expressed in a way that's, that's unfamiliar, in a way that's significant. People come up with their own theories. Uh, they imagine a machine that does it, or a, a robot, or some kind of elaborate press, or a vacuum system. And I always get a kick out of it because it's really the most simple idea that gets overlooked. I call it irony and aluminum, which is, it's really just a description of the media, whereas, you know, previously I was painting, so I would say, you know, this is oil on canvas. Irony and aluminum just seem like a fitting name, as well as a slight play on words with aluminum being a metal and iron being a metal. One of the most common responses is people say they've never seen anything like this, but one of the ironies is that they have seen something like this, it's just in a way that they don't recognize. The irony that the normally destructive force such as crushing uh, can actually be creative, that, that can be presented as art, that something familiar can be presented in a way that's unfamiliar. I was just out of boredom during a car trip to Orlando. I was in the back seat. I had finished a Red Bull, had nothing to do. I didn't have an iPhone to mess around with, so I just started fiddling with this can that had been partially crushed. And I noticed that, in a way, the, the dents would allow certain shapes to form. They would allow themselves to be manipulated. At the time, I just made a mental note to return back to the idea at a, at a later time. I applied some geometry, some, some artistic principles of repetition and shape and pattern. And it really started to grow, it really started to become something more than, than I thought it would. Red Bull has, an, has this art competition that they had been doing in, in different cities called Art of Can. So I entered a, a sculpted Red Bull can and it won the first prize in their contest. So that was really encouraging that, that other people were receptive to it, that it was something that um, was worth pursuing. But it, it wasn't until two years after that, I don't know what caused it, but just the idea popped in my head to use a blank can. And I'd always loved polished aluminum since I was a kid. Shiny metal was just something that was just intriguing to me. Uh, I, would, I would take my matchbox cars and rub them on the cement so they would be shiny metal. I just thought that was the coolest thing. When I sanded down my first can, I was, I was instantly brought back to that. It was just, just the finish itself was something that was just so beautiful to me. When I, when I used a blank can to sculpt, the result was, was just amazing to me. I felt it brought it to the next level uh, into something that could really be presented as fine art. It was a turning point for me as an artist, um, just to kind of go with what, with what I was feeling in a way that I hadn't ever had a chance to before. Uh, so just as an artist, just to get to that point was something that was very important to me. I built a machine that is kind of a lathe where it, I install the can in the machine and it, it spins the can and I sand it while I squirt it with water so it's a wet sanding process. It removes the printed layer off the can and then I, I polish it, I empty it and then I start sculpting. The main technique is using the tip of my thumbnail on the surface of the can to create a, a score, to push a dent a certain way, to create a ridge. The technique is an ambidextrous one. A lot of the movements, you need to mirror both left and right. I've always been a, an ambidextrous person, so it's, it's nice to have something that can really sink into on the right and left side. There is a physical limit 
to the to their creation because I used my thumbs they went numb for like two days at one point because of overuse. I can't really produce more than two sculptures in a day without suffering nerve damage. If you came to my house, you'd be inundated by half-sculpted Red Bull cans. <laughs> I keep them in storage so that I can refer back to many of them. I call it sketching. Many of the sketches are ones that need to be uh, revisited. Many of them are ideas that, that need to be further developed. Many of them I just do just to keep my thumbs in shape. One of the best things about the sculptures is their tendency towards variety, which keeps it interesting. For more on Deletta's work, visit ironyandaluminum.com.